Whilst the Spectrum, Amstrad and Commodore get most of the headlines nowadays for the 80s computer market, they weren't the only ones that were available. And in 1983, Memotech released their own ones, the 500 in 1983 and the 512 in 1984. So let's take a look at this lovely little metal beast. And here it is. <laughs> and a handsome machine it is too. So this, uh, well, this is the MTX 500 model. So this is the 32K model. The 512 actually had 64K. It's kind of meaningless because they could both be upgraded to uh, around 768K with some fudging. Uh, and it's one of the things that are kind of unique with this machine compared to the other machines of the time. There are several things. So whilst it does come with basic, like many of the machines of the time, it also had a built-in assembler and disassembler as well, which is um, just kind of value added really. It also, yeah, if you have slightly greasy pads on your fingers, <laughs> it will show up. <laughs> Basic itself was quite advanced and had a, a simple windowing system built into it as well. And uh, it was a very, very expandable machine. So yeah, like I said, the 768K uh, was a possibility. Um, it had two slots, which we'll see in a second, that allowed you to add expansions to it. It also had several media options, not just tape, uh, but also floppy disks and hard drives as well. So um, yeah, it's it was a fairly unique machine for the time really although its most unique thing we'll get into in a second so anyway first of all obviously this wasn't a very successful machine at all um, but a lot of that comes from the fact that Memotech themselves went bust in 1985 just a couple of years after this original machine was released uh, and this came out because they threw a lot of money into trying to get into the Russian market now when this was released uh, as we discussed with the, uh, the Spectrum clone from Russia, there was um, a bit of a, a Cold War going on at the time. And so things like this weren't allowed to, well, generally computers weren't allowed to be uh, shipped across to Russia. Now, there was an exception uh, with CPM based machines because I guess they were considered business machines so they couldn't be used for anything else. I don't know. Whatever the reason was, CPM machines were a loophole and because the M the 512 version of this could indeed be a CPM machine, in fact, technically this one could be a CPM machine, but regardless, they uh, decided to throw in a lot of money to make that their kind of their new frontier market. And so they made a red Memotech. And I'm saying that in the political sense, literally it was red. <laughs> uh, and they kind of built that up and put a lot of money into, the, uh, into work to getting that across to Russia. Unfortunately, Russia decided to go a different way. In fact, they decided to go with some MSX machines from uh, from Yamaha and Daewoo, uh, though that also fell through for other reasons. But it basically meant that all the money that uh, Memotech had thrown into getting this, what they thought was a sure deal, uh, was lost. And it was too much for them and they ended up going bankrupt. So that's basically a lot of the reason why this machine lost out, because it wasn't particularly expensive. Uh, £230, pounds, I think it was, for the, for the 500 version. So whilst that was a moderate amount of money, for what it was, it wasn't that expensive. So um, yeah, it was a real shame. Right, so I said like, the best thing about this machine isn't necessarily the all those extras, because uh, it really is. It's a, it's a Z80-based machine. It's got a TMS uh, graphics chip in it, which a lot of machines used as well. But it's really the construction that I like the most. So this is metal. <laughs> Aluminium to be exact. And so this was very different from machines at the time. There were a lot of machines with proper keyboards, obviously. Uh, there were a lot of machines that were expandable, but there weren't very many machines that were metal. And it's kind of nice. Even now, underneath this studio light, this is still cool to the touch. <laughs> and it's kind of wonderful. And the way it's put together is also wonderful. When I take a look at that now, let me get a, uh, I'll grab a screwdriver and we'll take this one apart. Right, so this, uh, we have some of the security style uh, screws in the side. So if I just remove this panel first of all, I don't know if it will pick up well on the camera. There we go. So this is a little, an extra bit of metal, <laughs> which is just kind of the end plate. And then if we look inside here, and I don't think there's quite enough light. There we go. You can see straight into the machine. 
<laughs> I think that's kind of wonderful. So um, you can kind of see what the construction is like as well. But if we remove the other side of it now. So now this lifts up and we've got the keyboard connector here, which will come off. There we go. So now once we unhook this bit from here, which there's, there's screws you can remove, I believe, but also it just slides out anyway. So there we go. The whole top side just slides out. We can put that down to one side. And now we have access to the motherboard. <laughs> it's just, it's a genuinely wonderful piece of construction. <laughs> So this, uh, yeah, so these are hard to get hold of, relatively hard to get hold of, obviously, and they're quite expensive when they do come out. But this one was actually given to me by someone. Uh, ooh, hello, it runs a bit. To look at that, it's almost had a work at that. Yeah, so this was given to me by somebody, um, which was very kind. Um, and there's no power supply for it, uh, so I, I will have to make a power supply. So we will show some games off of this, but they will be emulated. I apologize but we'll also we'll get this working we'll show off the power supply it uh it has kind of a not odd but involved let's say uh power system with a din plug but you can just put dc into it with a little bit of modification so that is what we'll do uh, you can also again you get ram expansions and stuff for these two expansion ports on either side so uh, yeah this is a nice big expansion port here and then there's one right against the side there so uh, yeah it's a really <laughs> it's just it's one of my favorite constructions of any computer it's just not just the metal but just the way it's put together I think it's amazing um, yeah there's a nice big uh, fuse there some giant caps which I'll probably have to check out but uh, yeah I mean it's a genuinely lovely machine so so look, there's our TMS9929, that's our graphics chip, and here we have our Z80. Uh, we've got some helper chips there for the Z80. Uh, some actually MTX branded ICs here, so these are probably mask ROMs, I would assume. And various logic chips and memory chips, of course, 32K in this model. Uh, back here we've got two the save and load ports with very strikingly similar looking jack heads to the ones that were in the Sinclair Spectrum, but I guess there weren't many options back then. Not like we have nowadays. And uh, it's kind of odd daughter board, which has to have some heavy duty capacitors on, on it. So possibly something power related in that case. And here's an RF modulator as well, if you want to get RF out. It's also got a video port here. Is that the one? Oh, I think that's it there, which is a BNC connector, which is uh, is interesting. <laughs> I've not used one of those for a while. Um, I don't know what that, what's that port. I need to look at the actual thing to find out what that port is. I don't remember what that port is. The labels are on Ooh, the top half. So, oh, that's an audio out, I guess. It says hi-fi. Uh, and there's an R two RS2, RS2, RS232 ports and two joystick ports as well and a Centronics printer connector. So this thing was, yeah, it was set up. <laughs> they did they did not skimp on the upgrade editions. Uh, and again, it's just um, it's just an incredible machine. I really genuinely think it's a great machine. Um, uh, just kind of sadly died before its time because the company just took a risk uh, which didn't pay off. Now, Oh, hold on, I just noticed. I said about the joystick ports, but I don't think they're filled in. Is that was that an option? No, no, there's joystick ports. It's wherever these two are, wherever I said those. Oh, the RS232 ports, I think those are, aren't they? So they are filled in, so I guess you could get an addition to that. I don't know. Anyway, um, so... Yeah, just a genuine shame. I remember when I was a, when I was a kid, and these would be in black and white adverts normally. Uh, in the kind of the Spectrum magazines, showing them off as being like a more, uh, a faster, more rugged replacement. Um, and I did kind of want one, but then I was a kid, I wouldn't do everything <laughs> in those magazines. Uh, but it was kind of overshadowed eventually by the 
by the Sam Coupe in my mind a few years later um, because the Sam Coupe was just a little bit cooler than this uh, I completely changed my mind now I do love the Sam Coupe but just the construction of this machine it, it just it just fills me full of joy to own one <laughs> thank you very much to the person that sent me it um, right well that's all we can really say about that if we just put it back together again Yeah, it's, uh, it's all done, back together again. Uh, it's a beautiful machine, genuinely beautiful. So uh, let's show off some of the games for it and then we'll go to the wrap up. That's our look at the uh, Mamatech MTX series, specifically the 500, that's one I've got. Many thanks to the person that sent me one of those, uh, it is a dream computer of mine. Um, and it's a lovely, it's genuinely a lovely machine, especially at, uh, when you actually get to see it. Uh, that metal construction is just a uh, thing of beauty. Uh, I will be getting this running. Um, again, I have to build a DC power supply, I have to modify it so it can be used for DC. And um, then I have to get the some kind of video out. I don't particularly want to use the RF if possible. So we'll have to work out what to do about that BNC connection. Um, but yeah, it should be possible and obviously we may have to fix it, but I'm pretty sure it should work. Uh, and then we'll do we'll do another video on some of his games, but yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful machine. <laughs> Right, if you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. Uh, and also uh, the bell icon, hit that to get more told when we make new videos, including the next one about the NTX. Um, oh, and we now have our the join button down here which uh, if you join that, you'll get early access to our videos from just 99 pence. Uh, I don't know if that translates to dollars or not, to cents. Anyway, it's it's there. It, it, only if you, you want to, though. By no means think it's, it's mandatory or anything. Just if you have the money spare. Uh, yeah, see you next time. The present is horrible. The future looks bleak. Remember our childhood. To get us through the week We're getting re-enthused Back to the past And the things we used We all know that our pasts were great Escaping the things that today we hate Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused